All right. Hey, good morning, traders, or good afternoon, uh, depending on where you're calling in from. But uh, welcome to uh, followmetrades.com uh, Trading 2018 Three Essentials. I'm Dean Jenkins, founder of followmetrades.com. And I'm really looking forward to this presentation. Glad that you are uh, you set aside the time to join me, and I hope uh, hope you find it valuable and interesting as we get going here. Uh, part of making it valuable for you is ask questions as we go, make comments. Um, there's a chat box on the Zoom webinar platform here, so make sure you can find that. And just for fun, before we get started here, find that chat box and type in where you're calling from, what city, what state, what country. I'm calling in just, I'm just south of Seattle, Washington, here in Olympia, capital of the state of Washington. And it is cold and rainy, which is really surprising for December in uh, the Seattle area, right? Not so much. But uh, hey, there's Cheryl from Johnson City, New York, San Antonio, Joesburg, South Africa. Hey, Joe. Jersey, Don. Very cool. New Braunfels, Texas, Johnny. South Bend, Indiana, cold and snowy, yeah. I'll bet it is. I heard the Midwest, East Coast are getting hit. Just out uh, outside of Roanoke, Virginia. California, but from Canada. Backpacking in the Philippines. And you took time backpacking in the Philippines to call in. That's awesome. Are you on an iPad or something? Something portable? Go again. Darn right. All right. Isle Beach, Florida, sunny. Yeah, kind of wishing I was there now. Android, there you go. I'm not a, I'm not a Apple person myself. I'm, a, I'm all in for Android. All right, we still got folks logging in. Um, <laughs> am I a guitar player? Well, they make good decorations, don't they? <laughs> I, I do play a little guitar, play bass uh, primarily now, bass guitar. Yeah, but I enjoy it. Oh, Johnny plays, nice, nice. Okay, well, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. This is being recorded, so um, if you have to drop out or something, that's fine. You'll be able to uh, catch up, or if you see something, you're like, wow, I wanna hear that over again. But uh, hey, before we get started, just a quick uh, disclaimer, reminder, you know, I'm a, I'm a trader, I'm not a financial advisor, and, and I'm not giving financial advice. We're going to be looking at some, some of my favorite uh, trades. Um, I'm going to uh, offer to look at some that you're interested in, offer my opinion. That's my opinion. Um, whether any individual ends up taking a trade, making an order, an investment, anything like that, that's strictly the decision of each person, right? Only you know what's right for you, what's a good fit, uh, what your risk tolerance is, all those factors that go into it. So I definitely offer my opinion. I share what I'm doing but each person has to make their own decision. Um, so I'm giving um, education and information, I'm not giving financial advice. And I know some of you are here, you got invited by uh, some of my other trading uh, friends, and you may not know me, so I'm, I'm Dean Jenkins, I'm the founder of followingthetrades.com. I've been investing in trading about 20 years. Hey, from uh, Canada there, Richard. Uh, Happy New Year to you, it's coming right up. So yeah, I've been investing in trading about 20 years. I started when I got hired at Intel Corporation in 1993, and they, uh, they offered uh, stock options, incentive options, uh, employee stock purchase, that kind of thing. So I had stock in Intel, and for a long time, Intel just split and doubled and split and doubled like clockwork, and that was awesome. And so I decided that I was a great trader and investor. <laughs> But I got really interested in, this, in the potential of the market. And so I uh, started participating in the dot-com stocks and uh, did okay, won some, lost some. During that time, I went and got my MBA from the University of Washington and learned how to do fundamental analysis, you know, study balance sheets and earning statements and all these things and ratios and, and dig into all that. And I got mixed results as a fundamental trader. It was very frustrating because you could identify a really good company or a lousy company uh, based on fundamentals and what they're doing. And the, you know, the stock never seemed to really, you know, a good company should go up, right? A bad company should go down. It should be pretty easy. And it wasn't. It wasn't that straightforward. Um, I ended up totally giving up on the market for a little while in 2007. But, you know, I couldn't stay away. It's too intriguing, right? 
I'm hooked. I'm a trader. So I got back in after the 2009 cash crash. And luckily, you know, I got out in 2007. I was a little frustrated. And I just went to cash for a while. And I was lucky because I missed the crash. And that was luck. That was luck. Um, I got back in after the 2009 crash. And I got into some winning trades, right? I bought Bank of America and a few others. You know, they're not going to fail. A whole too big to fail thing. Purely emotional, purely speculative. Bought Bank of America at five bucks. It went to 12. And it was stressful because I didn't have a trading plan. I didn't know what to do, right? Here's these things more than doubled. And should I take my profit or is it, am I going to miss out if it keeps going? Or am I going to give some back if it goes down? So it was actually stressful to win. Um, probably more stressful to lose. But um, I got interested in technical trading in about 2010. Boy, I made a lot of mistakes. I, I bought a lot of indicators. I, I fell for lots of uh, very enticing uh, propositions, like many of you probably have. Uh, maybe that's valuable in our education, right? But I got interested, and I, I turned the corner finally in about 2012, and a big part of that was having a mentor that I could follow who could teach me a place to ask questions and to, you know, as I threw out ideas to be held accountable to, you know, how, think about that. <laughs> Right. Uh, my mentor was Bennett McDowell, founder of traderscoach.com, and he, uh, we, we remain close and work together to this day. Awesome, awesome guy, awesome company. So about 2012, I finally settled in, getting consistent results and being consistently profitable. And um, that's pretty satisfying as a trader when you can stand back and go, okay, I finally got this going, right? I, I'm making profits. Not every trade wins, but my system overall performs and uh, I make a consistent profit. Um, and in 2015, I launched my current company. I started after, you know, being mentored by Bennett, I started doing coaching uh, for their company, coaching folks one-on-one, -on -one, and eventually uh, launched my own company. And I offer a, a stock advisory service. I offer uh, mentoring. I offer um, some courses on, on uh, my trading method, and I have a live trading room. So, you know, when I talk about uh, consistent trading, I had a how to back that up, right? So here's the numbers I've been tracking since 2013 uh, in my own portfolio. And uh, you can see year on year, we're making very consistent profits. We're gonna wrap up 2017 just beaten last year, so that's good. Uptick a little bit. But you know, on my web, this is my homepage, followingtrades.com. And you know, we're, we're knocking out consistent, solid uh, gains. You see on my homepage, there's no there's no Lamborghinis, there's no yachts, private jets, bikinis, any of that. We're not telling anybody, you know, you're going to take $1,000 and turn it into a million in six months. We're talking about consistent, solid uh, gains. I believe in complete transparency. So for each of these years, and I'm just getting ready to wrap up 2017. Uh, we just placed the last trade yesterday, last trade into the year. So we'll update this. And we're just, uh, just about the same, about 24, 25% uh, for 2017. But I, again, I believe in complete transparency. So every single trade I take is posted here. And, you know, the winners and losers, the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? And I also believe that um, if I'm going to post results like this, they ought to be verified, right? Independently, externally verified. So I have a CPA firm who audits my results. And you can see I started that two quarters ago. And so each quarter, a CPA firm looks at what I post on the website. And I give them my brokerage statements and they compare them and pro provide a report and say whether I'm actually doing what I uh, say I'm doing there. So I just think that's important. All right. So let's go ahead and get uh, into the material. So that's me. And jump in if you have any questions as we go. Make it interactive. Let's make it fun. All right. Happy New Year from Madison, Wisconsin. 25 below with wind chill. Packers getting ready to play. Man, I don't know about them Packers. The Seahawks are going to play tomorrow. They got a slim chance to get in the playoffs if they win, and I think if the Falcons lose. So, yeah, uh, uh, Zhang, that, that performance on the website is based on the stock picks. The trading room we track a little bit differently. Same method, though. 25, man, I spent a couple winters in Great Lakes, Waukegan, Illinois, in the Navy going through training. So I got that 25 below wind chill coming off the lake. That's cold. I grew up in this area in the Northwest. 
I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready for that at all. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off and just get into this presentation here. Uh, let me try and say your name. Ranganathan, thank you. Very few show the third party verified results. You know, I found that, I didn't realize that um, as I launched my business, but I started finding that out and uh, um, I thought it would be important to uh, provide that. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the presentation now. So, again, ask questions as we go, please make it interactive. I'm gonna, I think you need these three things, regardless of the year, right? To, whether it's 2009, 2017, or 2018, I think you need to have these three things to be a consistently profitable trader. First, you just, you gotta have great trade setups. I've got setups that I use. I don't wanna share my setups with you. But I don't have the only trading method on the planet, the only one that works, right? But I do think you have to have consistent, a set of trading rules, right, that have been back-tested and that have been proven. But you got to have setups that do at least two things, right? you got to have a high probability outcome. The, 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 the chance to win has to be greater than 50%. Other than that, it's just random variation, right? See, so the higher the probability of the outcome, the better. And you got to have a good reward to risk ratio. Um, if, if, you, if you're taking trades that have the potential to lose more if they lose than they'll win if they win, you got to be a really good trader. You got to have a really high win rate, right? The statistics are just against you if, if you take trades that have a poor reward to risk ratio, right? So I look for trades that have a high probability outcome and that have a great reward to risk ratio, meaning they'll win more if they win than they'll lose if they lose. I'll demonstrate that on charts. We'll look at a little bit of arithmetic there. I think you got to have great um, risk management. You have to control how much you're going to lose per trade. And I'll show my method for that. And then you got to have a way of managing a trade. So risk management is one thing. Risk management is a predetermined amount that you're willing to lose on the trade if it fails. Risk man or trade management is how do you manage the trade? You know, when do you take profit? When do you get out? You know, when do you exit? you know, for a win or when do you exit for a lose, all right? So I think you gotta have all these things, regardless of the setups or the indicators that you're using, you gotta have a good setup, you gotta have risk management, you gotta have trade management, all right. Hey Cheryl, good morning. Miles, cool, glad you can make it, Miles. Calling in from Florida probably, right? Nice and warm, most of us are cold, people are talking about snow. All right. So you got to have these three things. So here's, here's what we're going to cover today, right? First, I'm going to walk through these essentials in a little bit more detail. I'll show my trade setups. I'll show my risk management approach, my trade management approach. Then I'll demonstrate it on some live charts. And on the live charts, I'm going to take a look at some, uh, some uh, Bitcoin, crypto, blockchain, instruments right going into 2018 of course that's an interesting uh sector everybody's interested in that so i got some some uh crypto and uh, blockchain issues that we'll take a look at there um i'll share a couple of my current favorite trades trades that i like right now and you know i'm a stock trader stock and option trader swing trader primarily on daily charts so those are that's my focus but i'll look at any stocks you're interested in and who knows, I may, I may love some of your ideas. Sometimes I walk away from these sessions with uh, new, great trading ideas. So it's a nice two-way street. So stay with me if you want to get the most out of this and start looking at the picks and, and uh, offer, you know, through my setup criteria, offer my feedback on any trades that you like. You know, if you're multitasking, you might miss out on some good stuff. So stay with me and, and uh, stay focused and uh, hopefully you'll get some good, good value out of this. I see some of you typing in some symbols there. We'll get to them. We'll get to them there at that point. Okay, so I said I think in order to be consistently uh, profitable, consistently profitable, what a wonderful term, right? It's a great feeling when you get to that point as a trader. But you know, you know, you know, we're not sure exactly how much we're going to make, but we know over time I'm going to be profitable, right? This is going to be worth my time, worth my money. I'm not going to lose money. That's a great feeling and a great place to be. You need great trade setups with high probability outcomes and a great reward to risk ratio. Let me show you the, the indicators and setups I use. I use 
a combination of Ichimoku Cloud and Elliott Wave. I call it East meets West. I like the fact that these are independent systems, completely different uh, analysis techniques. And what I do is overlay them. When I see them agreeing, well, that's powerful, right? Two independent systems agreeing on a trend direction and a trade setup. That's good stuff. So this is what Ichimoku Cloud looks like on my platform. I'm using TradeStation. So what we look for on Ichimoku Cloud, um, Ichimoku Cloud has uh, five main elements to it as part of the indicator. It's got the Tenkan line, which here is a yellow line. It's, it's called the fast line. The Kaijun is the slow line or baseline. Very, very similar to a simple moving average. Simple moving average is calculated by looking back so X number of bars and taking the average closing price and then plotting a point and then the next bar closes and it plots a new point and pretty soon you got a line. Um, Ichimoku, Tenkan, and Kaijun, they look back X number of bars. Um, you know, the fast looks back less bars. The slower line looks back more bars. But they take the average of the highest, high, highest, low versus the average closing price. So similar approach, but a little bit different. I, and I like this better. And then the other elements of Ichimoku Cloud, you can see this green line on the edge of the shaded area. It's called span A. The red line is called span B. And what they do is, is they uh, create a zone that is then shaded, and that's called the cloud, and that's where Ichimoku Cloud gets its name, is that shaded region. And that shaded region represents projected um, support and resistance. So when price is on you know, one side, like in this case where price is going up, it's up above the cloud, the shaded region. That's a good indication of an uptrend, right? The price has risen above the cloud. And then the cloud is projecting support areas, an area that the price might come down to, find support, reverse, and then continue the trend. And the trend continues until price then crashes down through the cloud. Um, the thicker the cloud, the stronger the resistance it's being projected, because the stronger the continual uptrend. And you can notice it's plotted into the future, several bars out into the future. So that's uh, unique in very few indicators plot a future projection, right? Most indicators are perfect uh, rear view mirror instruments looking at what has happened. Um, of course, this is based on historical data, but it's projecting into the future where it thinks um, that the trend's gonna continue and where the support's gonna be. And often in a trend, we'll see the future cloud then thinning, indicating that support's getting weaker and we can expect in a reversal um, coming pretty soon. It's not by volume. It's based on uh, the calculations of price movement prior. It does not include volume at all in the calculation. All right. Yeah, there's the cloud. We talked about that. So I also use Elliott Wave. It's interesting. Ichimoku Cloud was uh, developed by a gentleman named Goichi Hasada in the 1930s in Japan. He worked on it for 30 years plus and finally published a book on his uh, findings and his method in 1969. So at the same time in the United States, another gentleman in the 1930s, Ralph Nelson Elliott, was working on uh, Elliott wave theory. Um, so his principle says that uh, price moves um, in waves, that there's a collective investor psychology, crowd psychology that moves between optimism and pessimism in natural sequences, right? And the, and the waves we're trying to trade here are this big impulsive move, wave three, Sometimes we'll trade the correction to that, wave four, and then the next impulsive move five. Those are the three trade setups I look at, trying to catch a new wave three, sometimes the correction after that in wave four, and then the continuation of the overall trend in wave five. I know a lot of people, um, there's a lot of approaches to Elliott wave. A lot of them are overly complex in my mind, um, hard to replicate. The practitioners argue about wave counts and you know, if you the classic approach, there's 144 permutations of various cycles and subcycles and all that. Um, I think it's too complicated. This is all I'm looking at. I'm just looking um, to catch an impulsive move, a correction to it, or a continuation of that trend. There's a great book. I should have put a picture of it here. It's called Elliott Wave Techniques Simplified, written by my mentor, El, uh, Bennett McDowell. It's on Amazon. So Elliott Wave Techniques Simplified, Bennett McDowell. It's on Amazon really belongs on every trader's uh, bookshelf, right? It's great reference, it's a great information. And I, I like to tongue in cheek say, um, I did not write the book on Elliott Wave, but I helped because he asked me to contribute and I wrote a chapter in the book. 
Um, so it, it, it is a good resource to have. And again, simplified is the key phrase there. Uh, as a scientist, you find Elliott wave is akin to forced curve fitting. My thoughts. Uh, it's an interesting observation. And here's, here's the thing with Elliott wave. A lot of people get frustrated when they're using Elliott wave. When they look at a chart and they say, I can't, I can't find the wave count. I can't label the waves. And the reason for that is they may not be present. Not every chart follows the Elliott wave pattern. And that's an important point. So when I teach Elliott wave and I teach my trading method, what we do is we, we're really clear. When you look at a chart, if there is an Elliott wave pattern forming, it should jump off the chart at you. And if it does not, it's probably not present. It right? doesn't mean that instrument's not tradable using some other method, but if you're using Elliott wave, the pattern ought to be crystal clear. It ought to leap off the screen, right? So we don't try and force it to the curve, right? We see if it's there, and if it's not, we move on to a different one if we're looking for an Elliott wave trade. Um, and I, I, this makes sense to me, you know, if you've, if you've heard of a, a gentleman named Benjamin Graham, He's called the, uh, the father of technical uh, or value investing. He actually was a big influence on Warren Buffett and Warren Buffett's approach to the market. Benjamin Graham's a really smart guy. If you get a chance to read his, uh, his book, it's, uh, it's worth doing. But uh, Benjamin Graham said, in, in the short term, the market is a voting mechanism. And in the short term, you know, probably a year or less, 18 months or less. In the short term, the market is a voting mechanism mechanism. In the long term, it is an earnings weighing mechanism. So earnings matter, fundamentals absolutely matter, right? But in the short term, the market votes and it votes in sequences as Ralph Nelson Elliott observed in waves of kind of collective psychology. People get really excited about something and, and drive the price up or they get really disappointed in something and drive the price down. The same works in both directions, right? And then there's some profit taking and then the original thing resumes. You see it time and time again. And what's cool is you can predict, once you have an impulsive move, you can predict using Fibonacci retracements how far, with the high probability of where it's gonna to retrace to. And then after you get a retracement into a Fibonacci zone and evidence of the trend turning, you can predict with Fibonacci extensions where it's gonna go next. And as a trader, isn't that really what you want? You want a price target. You want to know what's, you know, what, what's the high probability place that price is going to go next. That's the, that's the edge right there, right? So I combine this with uh, Ichimoku Cloud, right, to confirm we have a trend going up, that it's reversed, breaking down through the cloud, and then it's going up again. So uh, I use those things primarily. I also use Dow theory, a little bit of this. Dow, uh, Charles Dow developed uh, his theory. This is a very narrow section of the overall down theory, but it's just trend analysis. How do you know you're still in a trend, right? I talked about uh, a trade I was in, you know, af at when the recovery began in 2009, I bought Bank of America at five bucks, it went to 12, and I was stressed out because I didn't understand down theory, right? And every time it would go up, I was like, oh, this is awesome, and then pull back, oh, no, no, it's over, oh, no. Right? So Dow Theory says as long as you're putting in higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, you're in an uptrend. That's normal. Price does not move in straight lines. So it's good to have you know, a definition about when are we still in the trend. Downtrend, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. Right? A trend is beginning. It's confirmed with three data points, a high, a higher low, a new high, and then it continues. And it's over when you know, it does not. It pulls back, does not go on to make a new high it reverses below the overall high and then continues down and goes below that low. So, uh-oh, pattern's broken, trend is probably over. At least for the short term, there's a correction coming. It may resume later, right? So we look for these three things, right? I look for a good Elliott wave count. I look for um, Dow theory telling me that the trend has changed. And I look at uh, Elliott wave or an Ichimoku cloud, Ichimoku cloud, the price is broken through the cloud. So when I layer those things together, um, I got a pretty high probability setup. And then I have a method for um, reward and risk ratio. So let's go ahead and look at a live chart here, and I'll show you a trade that I like right now. This isn't it. This is, uh, I told you we we're going to look at uh, some crypto blockchain stuff. 
later, so we'll look at this in a minute. But let's look at Halliburton. So I'm long Halliburton right now. And it may look a little, because I start marking things up. So um, when I look at a chart initially, it's not, doesn't have this many things on it, right? I start adding things. Um, but here's Halliburton. And here's this classic Elliott wave move. You know, I said when you come to a chart, um, you know, back to uh, Ranganathan's comment about, hey, are you, are you curve fitting, right? Patterns either there or not, and on this one, it is there in spades. Let me see if I got my, uh, my drawing tools here, and I'll draw this. Just the uh, Elliott wave pattern I see here when I look at a chart like this. Right, I said I only trade wave three or four or five, right? So here's wave one and two. Here's the beginning of this trend, right? Because here was this previous downturn. We got a new trend. We got a high, high or low, new high. This whole thing is wave three. It's beautiful. Here's a correction down. These blue lines are a Fibonacci retracement zone, 38.2 to 61.8. So I can come and say, wow, we had a perfect wave three. Nice wave four, and now look, high, high or low, new high. Looks like wave five is getting ready to start, and I can project where that's gonna go uh, by using Fibonacci extensions. And so I, the target range for this is 61.8 to 100%, above 57.65. So I took an entry on this thing, man, because that, that just, everything matched up on that. Um, Look beautiful. So that, and there's actually still time to get into this trade. And how do we figure that out? Well, that's the whole point here I was trying to make about reward to risk. So I annotate my charts. I pronounced your name beautifully. Awesome. We'll see if I can do it again. Um, or if it was just lucky, right? That's what my guitar teacher said when I get a particular lick. He go, okay, do it again. Show me that wasn't luck. All right. So I use these these horizontal lines. I just you know it's just a simple horizontal line. Um, and I color my stop is red. My entry is uh, cyan, light blue. My target's this green line here. So we can just look at this trade right visually, and let's go ahead and and uh, move this to the closing price on Friday, Halliburton. And we can figure reward to risk on this one. Really, really easily and visually, we don't need a calculator, because the reward is the distance from the entry to the target, right? In this case, it's 48.87 to 58.01. So it looks like, you know, call it, right, uh, you know, three $3 and some change per share, okay? The risk is the distance from my entry to my stop. And look, this is about 2x. So I'll make more if this thing hits the target than I will lose if it hits the stop. How cool is that? That's what I'm looking for. Is a, that's what I call a high reward to risk ratio. Right. That one's not off the chart, but two to one, you know, I'll take that. And I have a method um, in my trading room and in my picks, I give people this tool, right? Um, I'll show you real quick the spreadsheet. We just calculate it. So this is a long position. So let's just uh, say the entry price on this is let's call it forty-eight eighty-seven. All right. The stop price is currently forty-four ten. Oops. Type it right. Target is fifty-eight oh one. There it is. And so I use a two percent risk, saying um, I'm willing. I don't want to lose but I am willing to lose up to 2% of my account. So that's not the position size. That's not the percent of trading capital in the trade. What I'm saying is if I get in at 48.84 and it goes down and hits the stop at 44.10, I'll lose 2% of my account. So let's use a $50,000 account as an example. Now, just using the 2% rule, the calculator says, yeah, go buy 210 shares. If you hit the stop, you'll lose 2% um, of your account or a thousand bucks. And it says the cost of that position is $10,000. Whoa, that's over 20% of my account. I don't want to put 20% of my account 
into one trade. That that's too high of an exposure. I think 15% is a is a good limit for each position. So it says if you constrain the shares to 15% of your account, you can buy 153 shares for $7,500 round it. You're at 15%. And if you hit the stop, you're going to lose 725 bucks. So out of a $50,000 account, if I, if it loses, um, I'll lose $725. And it's got a reward to risk ratio of just about two to one. It's 1.93 to one. And so that means um, if I win, I'm going to win just about double the uh, um, amount that I would lose if I lose. So pretty helpful calculation there. And that's, that's the arithmetic between it. Will this work for Forex? Absolutely. Absolutely. Exact same method. You have to, you know, you have to adjust the thing for the pips and price, whatever like that. But um, the same concept, the same arithmetic works. And if you use 1% and uh, you can just change this thing to one and it, would do that pretty simple all right so that's how I approach risk management it's um, you know first I look and make sure there's a good reward to risk ratio because remember every trade has the potential to fail we should be more worried first about um, what happens if the trade fails right because that you know if we don't control the loss you know if you set yourself up for a big loser and you, well, you know, it's going to win. Um, you know, you can lose a large percent of your account. And, you know, some of you online probably had that experience. It's no fun, right, to take a big hit. Um, I tell a story, you know, about a, my worst trade ever where I took a big hit. It was with Intel stock, and I was still working at Intel. Um, you know, I'd been there 93 to 2001, so it'd been like eight years. And the thing had done nothing but double and split, double and split. And I remember it's September 2001, no, it was September 2000, um, right as the dot-com thing was coming undone. And um, uh, Intel came out with his earnings report, and they were trading at about 65, and the earnings report came out, it wasn't good, and it dropped in the aftermarket session to about 40 bucks. Big drop, biggest I'd ever seen. And I said, well, that's just a buying opportunity, man. This thing only goes up. And I went long big. And guess what? Um, it did not go up, right? Intel hasn't seen $60 since 2000. Um, I took a big hit. And I had no risk control. I had no idea that the trade would lose, right? I wasn't mentally or financially prepared for that thing to lose, and it did. It lost a lot. Um, and it taught me something, right? And, and in, there's this, this uh, psychological cesspool that you can get into, right, where you take a – you know, you don't, you don't have a predetermined exit point, a stop. It goes down, you go, well, that'll come back. And it, and it goes down more, and you go, well, it'll come back. And maybe it goes up a little bit. And, and, you go, uh, and some, it gets to some point where it goes down so low, and you go, I can't close this trade. That, that's too big a loss. Right? And I got to that point. And finally, you know, it went from 40 down to 14 or 12 or something. And in disgust, I closed the trade. Um, so it was a good lesson. I learned. I learned. And so I think it's critical to have risk management, to go into a trade going, knowing that it could lose and saying, how much am I willing to lose and have that be what I call a pain-free level, right? So you've got to determine how much you're willing to lose on the trade. It's got to be a pain-free level, an amount that if, if it happens, which it could, right, it's not a big set. And I use 2%, right? And here's my formula. I just take the entry minus the stop, divide it into 2% of the account, and that gives me how many shares to divide, and I make sure I'm not taking a position that is, you know, of capital that's more than 15% of my account. There, I beat that drum pretty hard, but I think it's so important. Getting a handle on risk management, I think, is more important than your trade setups, right? There's a lot of different trade setups you can use, and indicators and combinations of indicators and whatnot. Um, I think there's only one way to, to control loss, right? So that's super important. You can agree or disagree with me, but I think, uh, I think risk management is more important than your trade setups. Your trade setups have to be good, right? but there's so many different approaches to that. All right. The last thing I think you need to be consistent, and, you know, this is a good review. I, I put this uh, presentation together, you know, at the end of this year just as a review for me and anybody else interested in 
you know, end of the year is a good time to look back over your trading results, see if you're happy with them, see if there's anything you want to tra change going into the new year. So it's a great time just to stand back and uh, do a little review. So the, the last thing we need here to be consistently profitable is trade management. What do you do once you're in a trade? It's different than risk management. Risk management is an upfront setup of how much am I willing to lose and what's the exit point if the trade fails? A predetermined black and white ironclad point that I will exit the trade. Whether you put in a stop order or not, you know, some people debate that and are worried about market makers hunting stops. Whatever you believe about that, the point is you gotta have an exit point. If it hits it, there is no debate, no hesitation, you close the trade. I think that's important uh, to be a consistent, profitable trader. But the last thing here is trade minute. Once you're in the trade, how do you take profit? When do you get out? Right? Because if you don't have the game plan predetermined, written down in black and white beforehand, good chance, I know for me and many traders I talk to, if it's not predetermined, not written down, not um, decided ahead of time, it's going to be an emotional thing. We're just going to uh, you know, go by the seat of our pants or you know, whatever. And that's not a recipe for good, uh, consistent results either. So I think great trade management includes taking profit at the right times, adding to the position strategically because there's a, there's a way to add to a trade without increasing risk, which is super cool. We call it the magic of math. You want to stay with winners for as long as possible, right? And exiting the trade at the right time, right? And, you know, so many different uh, trading uh, slogans, right? One of them is, you know, cut your winners early and let your, cut your losers early, <laughs> let your winners run. Well, those are true, right? You gotta, you gotta stay with winners for as long as possible. What that does is tilt your statistics, your overall profitability statistics in your favor. If, you know, the, the ultimate measure of trading success <clears throat> is, you know, there's two key statistics that I think are really, really important to track. First is your win ratio, how many trades do you win? And the second is your payout ratio. What's the, what's the ratio of your winning trades to losing trades? And I think you need to lead be in the two to one uh, league to be a consistently profitable trader, meaning the, the trades you win need to be about double the trades you lose on average, right? So if you lose, you know, if you're using the risk control thing and, and you're gonna lose up to $1,000 per trade, then the, the amount you win ought to be on average about $2,000 or more to be a consistently profitable trader, right? And to get that high payout ratio, you gotta have some big winners and you gotta, the only way you get Big winners is to let the winning trades run for as long as possible. Don't get out too soon, right? So you got to exit the trade at the right time. And we do this, you know, my method for doing this is using uh, Dow Theory. I let the market, I let price action tell me where the logical stops are, and whether we're still in a trend. Um, let's see this slide, okay. So I talked about Dow Theory with higher highs, higher lows higher highs, higher lows, that's, that's Dow Theory in action telling you that this particular part of the trend, this is the impulsive move, this is wave three, it's still intact. What you wanna do is when the trend starts, right, put your stop, this, this, this trade was an entry when it broke above the cloud, right? High, higher low, new high. Looks like a new trend, it, it broke all previous highs, broke out of this channel. It looks like a new trend, a new wave three starting, right? So we take an entry on it, our stop, it's down here at this previous low, high, higher low, new high. That's the place to put a stop, I think, and we calculate our position size from it. And then as it plays out, as new highs and higher lows and higher highs and higher lows are established, we trail our stop up to those key support areas, right? Price pulled down to this, didn't go through it, went on to make new highs. That's the place for a stop, and as the trade plays out, just keep trailing the stop. And I also have rules for taking profit Take a third off as it crosses key Fibonacci lines. Take another third off. And then ultimately, let the trend stop us out at our final stop when it announces through price action that the trend is over. And then, you know, there'll be another one, right? This, this uh, correction was too small to trade. So we wait. I actually took both these trades. These are real on Veil, right? We took wave three, let it correct, took wave five. And we don't take, we don't exit just because it gets to a target zone, some arbitrary point, right? We use targets to calculate whether there's sufficient reward, but we're gonna let that baby run for as long as it will run. You know, a good example of that is uh, Alibaba earlier this year. We took um, 
Alibaba, what looked like a wave five, well, um, that thing ran and ran and ran, and we just stayed with it, and that was a beautiful trade. Um, it went a lot longer than we thought it would, and you want to stay with those trades, again, to tilt the statistics your way. Uh, and again, we just trail the stop until the trend announces that it is over, right, through price action, and then let it go ahead and stop you out on the final one. Whether you have a stop order in place on the at your broker or not, your choice, I know there's debate about that. But at least having a predetermined point and the discipline to, to act on it, that's the critical thing. All right, do I check higher time frame for trend? Occasionally, if it's not clear, sometimes I'll do multiple time frame analysis. Hey, I, got, I see a couple of folks have their hands up, Joe, Rogan. Um, if you got questions, go ahead and type them in. I'm happy to, to field your question. All right. Where am I at my presentation here? Let me get back on track. So trade management, right? Hey, okay, we're at the point. Let's look at some live charts, man. Um, I'll share a couple that I like right now, and then um, I'd be happy to take a look at any symbols you have and uh, run it through my indicators and offer my uh, offer my my analysis, my opinion. You know, be forewarned. Um, I'm very selective, right? And I'm. Um, I am a swing trader. I'm looking to trade this impulsive move, the correction, or the continuation. These are wave three, four, or five. That's what I'm trying to trade. And then if there's a mature trend that hasn't corrected, it's too late. I'm not a trend trader, right? I'm a swing trader. So I won't be interested in it. Or if it's chaotic, right, I'm not going to be interested in it. So that's my criteria. Don't, don't be offended if, you know, if I don't like you. I have to look at 10 or 15 charts to find one or two that I like. But uh, do I only trade U.S. markets? Uh, Zane? Yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm just looking at the U.S. markets. A lot of the big, in, you know, big uh, interesting, not interesting. The big international companies have um, ADRs trading on the uh, on the American exchange, and I'll show you an example of that. So this is another trade I like right now. This is British Tobacco. Um, so here's Wave Three, big impulsive move. There's a perfect correction, and Voila, wave five, higher high, higher low, new highs. So we like a long on a British tobacco, and this is an ADR, right, or ADS, right? This is a British company, but it's also listed on the U.S. exchange, and uh, we've got a price target here on 72.77. Seems pretty nice. It's just getting underway. It's pretty early. Joe, yeah, stocks and options, that's my focus. That's my focus. I can offer my opinion here on... Uh, Joe, on your on your pair, and I'll do that now. So the Euro USD. So pretty interesting. So clearly, you know, like I said, uh, Elliott Wave ought to jump off the page, right? And this one does. There's a there's a clear wave three, big impulsive move. All right, I check momentum with this uh, oscillator down here. I want to just do the scaling, all right. So that actually was a, a wave four, so three, A, B, C, four. It, it was a little shallow, but that's a good four. So this looks like um, it's in five now, and it's got a pretty big target way up here at uh, uh, 1256. That looks nice, and that is above the Ichimoku cloud. It's above the 200 SMA. You got this previous high. It could be some resistance, so it looks good now. A higher probability would be above here, but uh, that looks nice for a long on a daily chart. So there we go. Yeah, AM definitely. I move as price moves up. I just went through as as price as price action plays out in the trend. I trail my stop from uh, significant lower, you know, higher lows to the next higher low to the next one to the next one. That's how I do it. Uh, do I consider use uh, MACD? No, I don't use MACD. I don't use MACD at all. This is a this is a, a price oscillator called the Optimum Wave Locator from uh, Traders Coach. Um, not it's not MACD. Okay. Any brokers? I you know the two. It, it depends. Uh, Zhang is asking if there's any brokers I recommend. You know, if if you just want to place trades, if you're following a signal 
service or advisory service like mine on. All you want to do is place trades. You don't want to look at the charts. You know, Charles Schwab can't be beat as a discount broker with execution and low cost. If you want to do chart analysis, then you need a charting platform. And I like Thinkorswim and TradeStation. Those are my top two. Uh, both excellent platforms. Uh, <clears throat> Rogan, what distance do you use between higher low calculation? Do I use average true range? No, I just use price action, right? So if we look here at this, uh, this, this move right here on the Euro USD pair, there's a high. So this, this thing was in a downtrend, right? It's a low, lower high, low, lower high, low. Trend turned, high, higher low, new high, right? That confirms that a new trend is beginning and I'll have my stop right here. After this new high is put in, this is where I put my stop. Then I would determine my position size from the distance from the stop to the entry. Yeah, uh, Ron likes IB, rock bottom, cheap trades. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I hear good things about IB. My, my issue is I, I really want um, my uh, analysis, my charting, and my brokerage. I want it all in one package. I don't want to be analyzing a trade here, putting it on over there. That's just my, I guess I'm lazy, right? So um, if I'm going to have TradeStation or Thinkorswim to do my analysis, then uh, I'm just going to go ahead and place my trades with them too. And I can place them right off the chart here, which is really convenient. So Bob's got some symbols up here. Let me go ahead and take a look. So I, um, I told you I like um, Halliburton. I think that's a good trade right now. It's good long. I like uh, BTI as a long right now. And uh, I don't know, you want me to show you a short trade? Actually, my favorite short trade, too, if anybody's interested in that. But I'll look at Bob's uh, symbols here. Bob wants to see FedEx. So I said that, uh, you know, given my method, if we have a mature trend, I'm probably not going to, you know, I'm a swing trader, not a trend trader, right, that I, that I probably wouldn't, wouldn't be interested in it. So FedEx is in a mature trend. This is all wave three. So it's too late for me. I don't, I don't, I don't chase trends, right? This thing's been going up since the beginning of 2016 and an unbroken uptrend. Um, is it going to break down here? I don't know. It's got to, to, to show us that a uh, correction is beginning. It's got to um, do several things. It's got to put in a, a low, lower high, a new low, and it's got to break down through the Ichimoku cloud. We're a long way from that. So, no, no joy here on uh, FedEx. Great trend, but no joy for me. Uh, Merck. Merck in a beautiful correction. You see, after this long uptrend, there it went, right? It started proving it. It had a, a low, lower high. It did not go above there, and then broke down into a new low. That's when the correction began, and it broke down with uh, some uh, velocity, didn't it? it? It's already in the correction zone. Now it's figuring out what's next, so the the big, the big current trade on Merck is over. Um, in order to see if the next up move is going to begin, it's got to break up through the Ichimoku cloud. We're not there yet. So it's in a bit of a holding pattern on Merck here right now. Uh, do I use money flow index MFI? I do not. I do not. Uh, Disney for Johnny. Yeah, Disney is a, kind of a poster child here for uh, when I said, you know, you look at a chart and, you know, people trying to learn Elliott Wave can get frustrated trying to assign a wave count to something like this. There's, there's no wave count here. This is pure random price movement. It's a chaotic market, and I don't like chaotic markets. There's no, there's no wave pattern to it. There may be some other indicators, you know, maybe some day trades on Disney at this time. Uh, for my techniques, absolutely nothing. It's a mess. Uh, yeah, it inter is interesting there, uh, Ron. Uh, Gopal, I hope I say your name right. Uh, press line.
Yeah, so price line breaking down. You can see we've analyzed this one recently before. Uh, needs to be updated though. Oh, I had it in the right place, talking on it. Um, so price line. Big, impressive rally up, of course, and it has corrected into the Fibonacci retracement zone. So again, probably looking for the next move up, but it's got to get through the cloud, and I'd want to see it get above. This white line is a 200, something moving average. I'd want to see it get above there um, before we started getting excited about a long on the price line. USD, CAD. Let's see. We did the euro. Yeah, this one's not as clear. So this actually, boom, boom. So it had this wave five, five waves down, three, four, five. The next move after a three, four, five is typically an A, B, C. So you might be looking for a reversal and a little move up here. I don't really like these ABCs. They're not as big as the uh, waves. So you're probably looking at A, B, C. Um, C is typically, uh, symmetrical with or a little bit bigger than uh, A. So here's, you know, A, B may end and do something like that. Um, but again, that's not my favorite setup. All right. Uh, NBL for Anthony. Oh man, they're flooding in. I don't think I'm gonna be able to catch up. Uh, noble energy, uh, maybe. This may be, this may be uh, there's three, four, five. So this may be an ABC as well, or this could be a new trend. Look how it's up above the 200 uh, moving average here. This could be a new trend forming here. This could be a pretty exciting. That makes me think um, of another one to, to watch. Uh, no one's asked about it yet, but GE. Hey, if GE ever does find a bottom, right? What a what an absolute disaster, right? But if, if it ever does find a bottom, there may be a nice correction uh, coming on GE. It's not ready yet, but that's one to keep an eye on, right? Apple, uh, of course, Apple. Anybody own an older iPhone? And uh, are you infuriated to find out that? Uh, yeah, we slowed that down for you. Um, so Apple's down here right at the cloud. Um, we want to see it break the cloud. It's had a couple uh, fake outs. So we want to see it really break with some momentum, momentum, maybe get below the 200 before we get excited about shorting Apple, right? Again, it's faked us out uh, several times in this uptrend. It's a little bit volatile. So before we think about a short, we want to see clear evidence of it and uh, way too late to go wrong on it. That's my thought here. Um, Let's uh, try to catch up here. Tesla. So Tesla is, uh, you know, big, big, huge, impulsive move up, impressive. And now a pretty volatile breakdown, isn't it? It's, we actually caught this short here in my trading room. This was awesome last summer. Oh, that was fun. That happened really fast. Um, it's volatile. It is really volatile. By the time it proves that there's another short coming, it's got to break down through these lows, right? Um, it's already in the retracement zone. So it's definitely bearish, but uh, there's not much meat left on this bone here by the time you get a high probability set up. So it's bearish, but I think there's better, better trades out there. Uh, Amazon, DJ. Up, up, and away, right? Beautiful uptrend. No sign of it turning down yet. Way too late for me to go long. Way too early to try and go short. You know, maybe someday there'll be a short coming, but not yet. ABX. So ABX, so Barrick Gold. So there's five. Number three, three, big, long, messy, four. This could have some potential. 
it's right in the zone there. So if it can break up through the Ichimoku cloud, up through the 200, so we're not there yet. But it's, I like to do what we call put this on a watch list, where we would set an alert and come back and look at it. So if this can, if we can get price up to about here, and that is 1669, there might be something interesting, and then there's a target up here above 23. We got it. So you set an alert, whatever platform or method you like, and get notified when price gets up there, and then when it does, come take a look again and see if it if it makes sense. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the trading room here in just a second. Uh, we're, get, we're running out of time. I wanted to keep this to about an hour. Uh, somebody asked about spot gold. Let's look at the gold futures contract, okay? And then we're going to have to wrap up. I, there's no way I'll get to all your symbols, unfortunately. So gold's a little bit volatile, isn't it? Uh, earlier this year had a nice rally. It corrected really, really deep, got down through the 200, and now it's breaking it's breaking again up through the, uh, it's above the 200, it's above the Ichimoku cloud. If we can expand the uh, scale here, we can see. So this may be another new uptrend starting on gold. It's taken out, it's right at this previous high, really close. Ideally, we want to see this, this is a big, a big impulsive move. I'd like to see it come up, reverse down to the cloud, and go up again, and start putting in some highs, and I could get excited about going along on gold. All right. Well, hey, that's, um, again, I wanted to be respectful of your time. So let me go ahead and start to wrap up here. Come back to the uh, slides here. So again, just to reiterate, I think there's three things that are just essential, regardless of the indicators you use or the setups that you're using. I think you gotta have, you know, a consistent method for great trade setups, you know, with high probability outcomes, great reward to risk ratio. You gotta have risk management, you gotta have trade management. You guys, do you agree? Do you think those are important? Would there be any of those that you would dispute? <laughs> hey, uh, Ranganathan, you're you're welcome. Thank you for showing up, man. Thank you. Um, th these are pretty obvious, right? I think I think we would all agree. You got to have these things to make to be a, a consistently profitable trader, right? And so. How many of you are excited about some of those trades we looked at, right? I showed you Halliburton. I showed you uh, uh, British Tobacco. Uh, there were some potential trades to watch, right? Uh, nobody wanted to see my short trade, so I didn't show you my short trade, but I got a really good short trade right now. But, um, oh, thanks. Thanks. Hey. And Doyle saying I got a great review on tradingschools.org. Yeah. Yeah, Emmett's an interesting guy, and he 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 rips most uh, trading educators, and he gave me a really really nice review there. Tradingschools.org, if you're looking for it. Um, thanks, man. Thank you. Okay, so hey, if if you're excited about these, but maybe you're a little bit unsure, maybe you feel like this guy right here is like, wow, that was a lot of information. I was interested, but I that was way too much to take in uh, in one session here. Right? We did record it. You can go back and look again. Right? But let me, if it's okay, I'll just take a, uh, a couple minutes and talk about a special offer here related to what we just talked about. I mentioned I have a trading room. Love to have you join me in the trading room, right? And we cover these three things on a daily basis. We look for great trade setups. Um, we, look, we do risk management. We, we practice that and we do, we manage the trades we're in, right? You know what, you know, to get, if you, you know, if you wanted some help, what would it, what would it cost? Well, you know, my, my winning picks, um, for the trading room and for the uh, pick service, they're averaging about you know nineteen hundred, two thousand dollars a month in return on average for last year, right? Um, you know, if you were to get uh, uh, a master trader, someone who has a you know documented um, um, history to c consult with you for four hours or more per month, you know, per week, that cost you a lot of money. You know, twelve hundred bucks probably one on one consultation. You know, they're not cheap. Ongoing education is not cheap, right? You're probably looking at several thousand dollars to get, you know, kind of one-on-one -on -one personal attention or small group attention to help you pick winning trades, to master the trading techniques, to be consistent and to follow them, right? You know, I'm going to offer you all those things, right? Uh, great trade setup, risk management, trade management, uh, a vibrant community to be part of, uh, the consistent 
trading methodology to be modeled for you, a place to get your questions answered for great trades on a daily basis to be uh, identified. And it's not going to cost you five grand or more. Um, the offer for you guys today at this webinar is, hey, come join my trading room for a week. Check it out for seven bucks. Right? That's, uh, that's a pretty good value. Let me go ahead and post a link here. For anybody that's interested, you can come join the trading room. Join us, you know, be there with us um, Tuesday morning because it's, uh, it's a holiday Monday, right? Uh, be, in, be there with us Tuesday morning uh, in the trading room and check it out for a week for seven bucks, right? Uh, after that, if you like it and you want to stay after the week, you pay 59 bucks a month for as long as you have a current thing. You can cancel at any time. The trading room is Monday through Thursdays. Uh, 615 Pacific, it's 915 Eastern to 745 uh, Pacific, 1045 Eastern. So it's an hour and a half right before the open. And every day we pick winning trades. You know, not every trade wins, but we have a good winning track record. We do live market analysis, training, live Q&A. And you got a community there um, who will answer questions for you. Um, and, you know, a place to have a dialogue. There's a, a Facebook group if you want to be part of that as well. Where people, you know, offline uh, outside the trading room hours are able to uh, help each other out. Yeah, you're welcome. And I know we got some trading room participants um, who are just listening in on the webinar. If you guys want to weigh in with your thoughts, make sure you make it a you know a comment to all panelists and attendees, and just uh, you know share your thoughts. So anybody's thinking about it, uh, you know, can hear what you have to say. So that link is posted again, seven bucks for a week. Come check it out. Fifty nine a month after that as a discount from the list price on the website, about 25% discount. So I, off, I invite you to be there, man. Come check it out. Come join us and uh, see if it's a good fit for you. Uh, a little bit similar to what we're doing today. You know, we spend more time looking at uh, charts and answering questions, but, uh, you know, very similar. Hey, Nick. Thank you. Nick's, Nick's uh, a member of the room, and he's jumping in there. Hey, Myron, you're welcome. Neil, good. Anthony. You guys are awesome. Happy New Year to you. Yeah, this is the eve of New Year's Eve, isn't it? Hard to believe that we're going to wrap up uh, 2017 here in a matter of hours. Last trading day has already happened. Mark is closed. Who knows what 2018... Oh, I was going to show you guys some, uh, some crypto stuff. So while you're thinking about this offer, I'm going to... Uh, I'll post that link again. I forgot to, to do my crypto thing. Let's go look at a couple of charts. So uh, CBOE or CME and somebody else just launched uh, futures. And let's check out this uh, Bitcoin futures. Huh? Everyone wants to see Bitcoin. Look at this thing. This is a daily chart. Let's do, a, let's do 60 minute. We'll get the data a little more interesting. There we go. So it launched at... Uh, you know, call it 20,000, and it's currently at 14.5. That's pretty volatile. That is a pretty volatile, you know, on a percent basis, that is a huge swing. So where's it going to go from here? I'm not sure. I want to let this thing mature just a little bit right, um, uh, more before I uh, – get involved, but I definitely want to watch it. It's really, really interesting. Now, the trading room is not intraday. We're not doing day trades, uh, Biz. Uh, we, it, it's uh, daily charts, sometimes 60-minute charts. And so we track those trades every day in the room um, and update them. Um, similar trades and trade setups to the uh, stock pick service, but there's a little bit of overlap between those trades, right? But um, Trading room, we're taking some different, we're taking more trades, right? Yeah, this is definitely recorded, uh, Goran. It's recorded, and I'll send it out to everybody who registers. You'll get a copy of that, right? Okay, so let's look at another. I was really interested in a couple of uh, Bitcoin and uh, crypto blockchain related symbols. I'm going to be tracking some of these in the trading room. So here's BTCS. Um, that's kind of a mess, isn't it? But look where it, we get enough data on the screen. 
look where this thing came from. I think you got to have a, an iron stomach to be in this market. Where did it come from? Trading for pennies right now, closes on Friday, was 22 cents. Where did this drop from? Oof. We got a, yeah, down from over eight bucks. Now that pattern, if you're, if you have the stomach for it, right, that looks like it could be breaking up out of that channel, right? And 22 cents, right? Things go, if it goes back up to 40 or something, that's a pretty big win. Um, that would be a very highly speculative trade. I would not tie up a ton of capital in it, but if you like that, um, it may be fun. <laughs> Looks like a heart attack chart, Ron says. Yeah. Yeah, it could be fun. Uh, here's a couple other, uh, Riot is a uh, blockchain. Uh, that thing broke out of nowhere, right? And is in a nice uptrend, big correction, or maybe another as a real short wave four. So that may be heading up again. That's something we'll be tracking. Uh, some of these are pretty interesting. MARA, that's a, they're a patent group, so not a direct blockchain, but they buy up patents. Um, tough business there. Uh, down correction, probably heading down again. That one's not as interesting as some of the other ones. Uh, maybe this looked very similar to when we looked at before. Um, there may be something going on there. These things trade at high volume, so that's nice. They're liquid. So these will be tracking some of these in the trading room uh, uh, next week as we get into the first of the year and see if any of these uh, uh, move into a, a good trade setup for us. All right. Well, hey, thanks for being here. I enjoyed this. It was a good session. You guys were fun to present to. I liked all your questions. So again, uh, there's the offer, you know, come check out the trading room for a week for seven bucks. Uh, come join us, see if it's a good fit. And uh, hope to see you there. Uh, again, thanks for being here. This was fun. Um, Dean Jenkins from followmetrades.com and have a great uh, New Year's celebration. Have a happy New Year, be safe. And I hope to see you Tuesday morning in the trading room. What I'm going to do is uh, go on mute here and uh, catch my breath. And then uh, if you have any questions about the offer or you have trouble signing up, go ahead and um, type that in. I'll be glad to try and help you out. But thank you. Happy New Year. Be safe. And I hope to see you uh, at an event like this or in the trading room uh, early next year. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.